remember that I made you a promise and that promise was to get back to this uh, autocomplete program and implement the Ajax functionality using promises. And uh, uh, I will do that. I will rewrite the Ajax uh, uh, module using promises instead of the callback pattern we have used uh, up until now. Uh, maybe we, we won't see a big improvement in the code in this example. Promises are really, really good when you have a lot of callbacks. And uh, in this autocomplete uh, function, we have only one callback. We have uh, uh, bu 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 the ADX, uh, this one. Uh, so we don't make repeated uh, or make several uh, ADX calls at once or load different resources or make stuff depending on uh, other asynchronous uh, uh, events. So in this case, maybe promises won't uh, make such a difference, but I will in the end I will show you how we could use it if we have multiple callbacks uh, or multiple uh, asynchronous functions and how that will play out. Uh, I will recommend you all to go uh, and check out uh, 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 Matthias um, MPG ME on YouTube, Matthias Petter Johansson, I think his name is, uh, where he has an uh, um, excellent talk about promises. Uh, so I will link that in the description uh, for you to see. He, he uses uh, newer uh, uh, um, ECMAScript 2015 syntax using let and use instead of var and using uh, the arrow functions instead of uh, uh, anonymous functions like this. Uh, basically, you, you remove a function in the start and you do something like that instead. Uh, but that's basically the only difference so it's a really great uh, uh, recording so please go watch that after mine um, okay let's get down to business what is a promise a promise uh, I mean this code we we tell the ajax.post that when you get an answer from the server please call our function here and if we got an error uh, use the first uh, argument uh, uh, or in our case the parameter or if you uh, succeed then please send data in the second uh, as the second argument uh, and we need to check if there is an error then we throw a new error uh, and uh, if uh, everything is okay we do something with the data uh, this requires us to always know that we need to pass in the function like this to the post function uh, and that the protocol for doing this is that we need para uh, two parameters error and data in this specific order if we happen to 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 add them in the other order so we start with data and we send error as the second everything will break so we need to have a lot of common understanding about how to put this all together in promises you 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 instead you call a function like you would do in a synchronous way and back you get a promise from that function and the promise is an object that uh, says that okay i will call stuff on this object when uh, i'm finished or if something false happens um, and I think in M MPG ME's uh, um, uh, promise lecture, he, he talks about promises like being this stuff when you go to the to the bank to get a loan, um, then you get a money promise from the bank saying, okay, you are uh, uh, able to get a loan for this amount of money, and then you can go buy a house or anything, uh, and the bank is a guarantee that. Um, you will have the money in the end and promises works in this exact way you get something back it's not the data yet but you get an object back that you can start working with and methods on this this object will be called when stuff happens 
So let's rewrite the ADX uh, request method. So uh, to create a promise, uh, we use the new promise feature. You should always have a look at uh, uh, compatibility issues. Uh, if you're doing promises as of today, 2015, uh, you will get in some, some uh, uh, problem. Uh, can I use promise? Uh, it's oh, it's quite okay actually. Uh, it's Internet Explorer that will probably never support uh, promises. So, but if we have edge, it's okay. Uh, great. I actually thought that Apple was uh, a little bit late on the train, but they are on the train. So we create a new promise and this promise will take a function as a parameter, a callback function with two arguments. And this we must know uh, when we create our uh, function that will use uh, promises. So we create a function with two uh, parameters, resolve and whoops, reject. And when what we say is that okay we have a promise and this request when we call the request we will actually return this promise so using so when we use this uh, request method we get a promise back and for us to tell uh, that something has something is okay so instead of calling the callback we will call the resolve function and instead of calling the callback with an error we call the reject uh, uh, function so those are actually uh, uh, functions that we will be able to call so we could uh, do something like this uh, resolve Hello. If I do that, then this promise will be resolved uh, immediately. Uh, we don't want that because we want to resolve this when we get an answer from the server. So we need to add some functionality to, to this uh, promise. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move all the functionality in this ADX class into the promise. Whoa, messed up. Like that. Uh, okay, so let's see what's happening. Okay, we still have our config object, so that's the same. We create a new XML HTTP request. We add an event listener for the load. And when we get an answer, if the, requ uh, the request status is over 400, then something w went wrong. So instead of calling the callback with the status, or as we actually should have done probably, is to make uh, call the callback with a new error. Uh, and send in uh, the rec status instead. But, okay, so instead of doing that, calling the callback, we call the reject method. Like that. Uh, with a new error, and we could actually, if we like, network error, something like that. Uh, so if anything went wrong, we reject this promise. And if something is okay, we resolve it. And we resolve it just by sending in the response text. No need for sending in null in this case anymore. Uh, so we just send the text back. And then outside the listener, we open uh, the request. We set request headers like before and we send the uh, request. Great. Uh, we need to rewrite the post and get methods. We don't need callbacks here anymore, so remove them. And um, instead of uh, 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 sending in the callback to the request object, we just return the promise that we will get from the request. So we say, okay, request uh, uh, something accordingly to this config 
and get the promise back and just return the promise uh, from us. So return like that. Great. And we don't need a callback anymore. Okay, so this has been rewritten now using a promise. So this request method or the get and post will return a um, uh, promise. So now we need to use this instead of calling it with a callback. So we go into our autocomplete, autocomplete function. Uh, let's see, where do we do the call? We do it here. So instead of sending a uh, callback function like this, we now just make the post call. Let's move that away. And promises this, remember this will return a promise, so we could actually do something like this if we like. So we, uh, we could do this, do it like this uh, first off. So we get a promise back, and this promise has a method called then, and then will be called when the promise resolves. So when we call resolve from within the, the promise, then the then method will be called. And this takes the function uh, and the data, whoops, the data <coughs> that we sent when we resolved this uh, promise. So we get the data here or response text here. So now we could take the functionality we had here. We skip the error part. We just want to do something with the data. So we move that into the then, like that. Okay, now you can actually chain those uh, calls. So we need to handle the error somehow. We could do a promise.error, uh, no catch, sorry, it's called catch. Uh, and uh, add uh, a function to, to the catch, but we could also do it like this, then and then catch. So this catch function will be called when something is rejected. So when this one is called, catch will be uh, called in uh, at the promise, and we will get the error uh, in this case. And we could actually just log the error. So dot log the error, or do some other error error handling if we like. So remove that one. Uh, are we right on all parentheses? Which one goes to that one? It's that one. That one is. There is something wrong. I don't think we need that one. It's okay. <coughs> Let's save. Okay, it didn't fail at the build at least. Um. So. This step is also unnecessary. We could do it if we like. We don't need to save the promise for later. We could just chain it like this. So we make a post and w uh, when it resolves, this function will be called uh, when something succeeds and this function will be called when we get an error. Okay, oh, let's try it out. It will probably not work in the first try, right? Oh, it did magical. <clears throat> and no errors yet. Okay, let's check if we do something falsy. Let's uh, say that uh, we, bup, 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 in the app, we change to a falsy address like that. Uh, and this is actually. Uh, the arrow that uh, got thrown from, uh, uh, catched, I guess. We could just, to make sure, uh, we could, 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 where are we? We are here. Console log. Whoops. Uh, 
No, where did it go? I'm doing something completely wrong here. Okay, so if the status is reject this with a new network error. Uh, where am I failing? And we catch this one. I need to do some debugging, I guess. Okay, I think I know what went wrong. I will explain. Uh, so, first of all, I just changed. So instead of uh, making uh, a request to uh, a resource that is not found, I just changed the content type so we get an, uh, get an error for the content type not being correct. And we can just check it out and see that this will generate a bad request and we can uh, uh, log the bad request like that. So we get, get hold of the bad request. Uh, if I change this back, oops, everything works like a charm and make an error like that. <coughs> we actually don't handle that error, so that will be thrown out. And we can actually handle that error. We can add an event listener on the re uh, request object if we like. Uh, that is request dot add event listener. Um, I hope I haven't tried this, but it should work. Uh, so we could listen for errors on the request itself. Uh, and if we get an error, uh, we could uh, do, 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 do a reject as well. So we reject when we get a network error as well. And we do it by calling a new error. Um, I call this. I call this actually request error, and this one I will call network. So we could separate them. Could send the status as well. I think that's okay. Don't like how I write my code. Whoop. Okay, reload. Yep, now we get a network error and we could, for God's sake, remove that, that oopsie thing I added. Uh, that makes it so when I had the oops here that we didn't get the whole, whole trace stack, we will get another message now, I guess, uh, like this, so we could see the track, uh, traced error more precisely. So we got a network error, and if we change this back, so we don't get a network error, like that, reload. Now we get the request error because we have a, a bad request. So that's nice. And the, the, f the nice thing that we haven't noticed in this application, because in this application using promises didn't help much. It's, an, it's a cleaner interface. Uh, instead of, I mean, remembering where the callback is and which order the parameter should be in. So it's a, a, a lot cleaner uh, interface for, for, for that sake. But uh, the most powerful stuff comes, comes when we uh, have multiple um, uh, requests. Uh, we could actually just remove everything in the app. And I will copy paste something from uh, the Mozilla, an example from Mozilla. Don't need to write it all. So in this case, we have three promises, P1, P2, and P3. Uh, you can think of those as uh, network requests. I mean, we could maybe qu querying uh, three different resources. Uh, and this promise will resolve immediately. Uh, so uh, this one will be resolved uh, um, instantly uh, with the data three. And this one as well, this is just this is even not even a promise, but uh, we'll get into that. And this is a new promise that resolves after 100 milliseconds uh, using the set timeout. And then we have a method called all. So if we look at this code, this what this says is the all method says that okay, take an array of promises or a iterate it iterable uh, object of some kind, and array is uh, probably the most, the thing you will use the most. Uh, 
so we have an array with objects uh, with promises and when all of those promises are fulfilled or resolved then do this so if we run that application save and run we see that we get 3 1337 and 4 but if i add this to oh let's see 5 seconds like that we wait we wait we wait and after 5 seconds uh, the promise all promises will be resolved at once or for us at least presented at once uh, and the values we get in is actually uh, the array containing on each position containing the, uh, the data that the promise uh, held and we see that even though p2 wasn't a promise it works uh, with all uh, so instead of having having them like this let's add a similar code to the p2 so we have we have one function that resolves after four seconds and one that resolves after five seconds and for us it's totally okay if those three promises all run at once parallel in parallel so if we look at this reload one two three four five they, they don't stack if we have done this in a callback kind of way we will probably first resolve this one and when that is done we will call this one and when that is done we will call this one so they will stack so it will take nine seconds to resolve this or we would have to do something some check for ourselves that all promises are fulfilled and when they are we need to run our code but promise all does this automatically for us and even better there or uh, a useful function is uh, race so if we instead say that all of those should be resolved, we say race. And race basically means the one resolved first, we call this foo and this bar. <coughs> uh, whoa. Uh, no, where am I? In wrong app, this one. Uh, so the one resolving first will be the winner. We can remove the one that resolves directly. Uh, so we make a race between between p2 and p3 and when one of those uh, promises resolve uh, the console log will be called with the value of the one that resolved reload wait and after four seconds the bar function resolved so if we change this one to three and a half second now probably after three and a half seconds the foe will be Called. and then will never be called when this resolves because we had a race so race and all are something you will probably use quite a lot uh, using promises because this is a common task you will in many cases you will need several resources to load at once so things happening at the same time and you need to find out when everything has happened please do this then promises are really really strong so a small example on how you could work with promises uh, please go check out the resources linked uh, at the course or and in the description below